Hi and hello. Today, we are talking about Elasticsearch. And specifically, we're gonna dive a bit deeper into which metrics you should be looking at to troubleshoot and diagnose your Elasticsearch clusters for maximum performance. Let's go. If you're new here, my name is Caleb and I work with the guys over at Semitext. Now, what's that? On the surface, we offer a full stack monitoring solution, but essentially it's a bunch of geeks who absolutely love Lucene, which as you may or may not know, is the heart and soul of Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, and Solar. People on our team have been contributors to these open source projects for years now and know all the ins and outs of these technologies. So of course, at Semitex, we offer professional training and consulting for these technologies. And we have a great monitoring tool with killer integrations for Solar and Elasticsearch. The link is down below for both of those. With that seamless and shameless plug out of the way, let's get right into which metrics you should be monitoring in your Elasticsearch cluster. Before we discuss the top Elasticsearch metrics to monitor, let's quickly cover how to find these metrics. These metrics can be broken down into levels, the cluster level, the node level, and the index level. To collect all of these, you have a few options. You can set up systems to retrieve this data automatically, or you can do it manually. Now, manually fetching data might not sound like much fun, but it's actually quite useful in certain situations, like getting a quick snapshot of what's happening in your cluster right now. Elasticsearch exposes a wealth of metrics that you can use to peek into your cluster. To access these stats and metrics, we need to talk with the Elasticsearch API, which can be accessed using tools such as Kibana's dev tools, curl, and pretty much anything else that sends out an HTTP request. To retrieve the cluster health metric, you would send a get request to the cluster health endpoint at the Elasticsearch REST API. The response will contain a JSON object with information regarding to the health of your cluster, including the number of nodes, the status of those indices, and the overall status of the cluster. To get all cluster metrics, you can send a GET request to cluster at stats. And to receive metrics from a specific node, use GET nodes, nodes ID, and stats. For indices, you can use the indices name slash stats, or just use states for all indices. Do note that these endpoints are just a few of the many, many endpoints that you can use to receive cluster and node level metrics. Here are a few more worth mentioning. Cat indices to see which indices are not assigned to a node, or if something is wrong. Cluster stats and node stats lets you see the stats of your cluster and nodes respectively. With cluster stats, you get an aggregation for the whole cluster, and with node stats, you see which nodes are overloaded and with what kind of job they are preoccupied with. There are many, many more APIs for specific stats and metrics, but these are the most important ones that give you a high level view of your entire cluster. For a more exhaustive list, check out our cheat sheet that we have down in the description below for free. Monitoring Elasticsearch. All of these metrics are very informative and valuable, so it just makes sense to save and plot them out in graphs and to even set up alerting for when something goes wrong. Without a monitoring tool to automate this process, it's very difficult to see which indices or nodes are particularly busy. For example, you need to see the difference in indexing time between two moments to see how much indexing is happening over a given amount of time. And that amount might vary from one node to another, from one index to another, or even in the same node in the same index, but one hour after another. This is why having a monitoring tool is absolutely invaluable. Now there are many tools out there on the market, but obviously I recommend using Symmetex. Symmetex Cloud is a cloud-based monitoring tool that provides comprehensive Elasticsearch monitoring capabilities. So that's the tool that I will be using in this video. There's a link down below to a freemium version if you wanna try it out for yourself. To get started, you'll need to install the Semitex agent on your Elasticsearch cluster. This can be done with a simple copy, paste, and run, and the agent will automatically start monitoring your Elasticsearch metrics and logs too, if you so choose. Be sure to check that out as well. Top Elasticsearch metrics to monitor. First, let's look at three very important high-level metrics. Cluster health. Cluster health is a high level overview of your entire cluster and tells you if each node and shard are working as they should. When you have a shard, the index data, that is not assigned to a node, that's bad. And you will want to take care of that. And when a node crashes or leaves the cluster, again, that's not a very good thing. And within Symmetex, we have set default alerts for both of these metrics as they are super important. So be sure to keep an eye on your cluster's overall health. Indexing performance. The indexing performance metric provides information on the rate at which documents are being indexed. Indexing is the process of adding data to Elasticsearch. 
and it is a crucial metric to monitor as it can have significant impact on the performance of your cluster. Again, this is a high level metric that would require more drilling down to uncover underlying issues. But you can do that by looking at the indexing time, the merge time and size, the fluctuation and in overall index size, and the refreshes and flushes. All of that will give you a clearer picture of your indexing process. If your indexing performance is slow, you should start by looking at the issue from the client side. Are there enough threads? Are the batches of a reasonable size? Is the network fast enough between the client and Elasticsearch? If all that checks out, then the fault is probably on the side of Elasticsearch, at which point you will probably want to look at your monitoring tool to discover which particular index, node, or task is taking more time than it should. Possible steps forward would include to relax the refresh interval, turn translog to async, and tweak the merge policies. If that sounds complicated, check out this video from O'Reilly Velocity for more on that. Search latency. Another important metric to watch is search latency, and that is the time it takes to return search results. High search latency can result in slow search results, which can frustrate your end user. If search latency is high, it may indicate one of the following scenarios. You have too many concurrent queries for the resources in your cluster, check the query rate metrics for that, or your queries are too expensive. Check the logs for which queries are taking more time and see where you can optimize them. Maybe it's finally time to replace the wildcard queries with better analysis, or maybe you can index data differently so that you won't need to join or script queries. Now let's look at some metrics to help you drill down your issues. Node memory usage. So when we talk about memory in Elasticsearch, we need to be specific about what type of memory we're talking about. Is it RAM or is it heap? On a server that runs ES, your RAM will be roughly divided into heap memory or free memory, which can be used by the operating system to cache. With heap memory, if you run out of that, it's really bad news. Basically, Elasticsearch crashes at that point and all bets are off. But fear not, Elasticsearch version 7.0 brought with it the parent circuit breaker. This little guy catches allocations that would cause an out of memory error and prevents them from happening. And now the scenario of running out of heap memory is practically impossible due to the default parameters of the parent circuit breaker. So while some applications may fail, like running a query or responding to a ping from the master, your Elasticsearch cluster at least will not crash. If you're rocking an older version of Elasticsearch and you're not allowed to upgrade for some mysterious reason that's beyond you, keep a super close eye on your heap memory. Fortunately, hitting 100% heap usage is very unlikely. But if the circuit breaker does trip, it's important to investigate the cause of this issue. Some possible reasons for this scenario could be running expensive queries, like wildcard queries that aren't limited and match millions of terms. Or if you're just having too little heap, such as only having one or two gigabytes for one terabyte of data. Another reason could be the default garbage collector configuration just isn't cutting it, especially if you index a lot of data and run many searches at the same time. On the other hand, if we're talking about OS cache, it's likely to fill up if you have lots of data, such as log data. While this is okay, the more data you have and the slower the disk, just know that the performance will be slower. To free up space for your logs, you would ideally ship them off and create a second Elasticsearch cluster so you can manage, search, and troubleshoot with all of your log data. But that's a lot of work. Why not let Symantex Logs do that for you? We will manage and scale your log data to suit your needs. And you can cross-reference your logs with all the other metrics that you already have inside of the Symantex cloud. Pretty nifty, if I do say so myself. By the way, if you liked this video so far, be sure to hit the like button and consider subscribing. We'd really appreciate it. Anywho, here are some other common reasons for running out of heap. Large queries on old ES instances. If your queries are retrieving a large number of results or returning large documents, they can consume a lot of memory. Try updating to a newer version of Elasticsearch or retrieve only the data that you need to avoid returning large documents. You can also consider using paginization or scrolling to retrieve data in smaller batches. Nesting. If you're performing complex aggregations on multiple levels, be ready to consume a lot of memory. Let's say you want some YouTube data, but you also want to see the breakdown of YouTube topics. And for each topic, you want to see the most influential uploader. And for each uploader, you want to see the most popular day in the last five years. And for each day, you want to see each hour. You get where this is going. That would be a very expensive aggregation because Elasticsearch has to build the whole tree of buckets in heap. I understand if you absolutely have to do this, you do what you have to do but try to perform aggregations on fewer levels and consider pre-computing results to reduce memory usage. Cache size. 
If your caches are set to use a lot of memory, guess what? They will use a lot of memory. Consider reducing the size of your caches, especially if your cache hit ratios are low, like they tend to be when you do logs. Disk usage. Disk usage is another critical metric to monitor, as Elasticsearch uses lots and lots of disk space to store data. If free disk space is low, new shards won't be allocated to a node at first, and then if the problem aggravates, shards will be moved off that node. These things can lead to imbalancing, which is a fancy way of saying performance drop. And eventually, new shards won't even be allocated anywhere and indexing will be stopped altogether because nodes will be marked as read-only when there isn't enough disk space. If the disk usage is high, it may indicate that you need to optimize your data retention policy or you need to add more disk space to your cluster. CPU usage CPU usage is an important metric to monitor because it reflects the load on the Elasticsearch cluster. If the CPU usage is constantly high, it can indicate that your cluster is under-resourced, or that there are issues with your queries. Also, take a look at the proportions between the user, system, and I.O. weight. For example, if you see that the CPU usage is at 20%, but the I.O. weight is at 10%, it may indicate that the I.O. is the bottleneck and that queries are stuck waiting on the I.O. Network Latency Network latency is the time it takes for data to travel between the different nodes in your Elasticsearch cluster. Monitoring network latency is important because a slow network connection can impact the performance of your entire Elasticsearch cluster. If some nodes are randomly dropping out of the cluster without timeout exceptions that you would see inside of your log data, this might point to poor network performance. One mistake that is a super big no-no is putting nodes from the same cluster in different AWS regions. Different AWS instances, sure, that's not a problem, but don't put them in different regions. Make sure to check your settings and thank me later. Segment merges. Segment mergings are a process by which Elasticsearch combines smaller segments of an index into larger ones. We talked a bit about merges when we addressed indexing, but here's a tip. If segment merges are taking longer than the actual indexing time, it may indicate that you need to optimize your merge policy. Check out this video here for more information, or simply add more nodes to your cluster to distribute the load evenly. Cache evictions. Cache evictions occur when Elasticsearch removes entries from its cache to fit new ones in. If cache evictions are occurring frequently, it may indicate that you need to increase the amount of memory allocated to your cache, or that you need to optimize your queries to better reuse cache entries. In our consulting practice, we've seen these metrics help us reduce query latencies and increase throughput hundreds of times over by identifying and acting on the bottlenecks that we've spotted. And even when performance was okay, we've been able to reduce the cluster size and thereby cost 10 times over. So yeah, checking on these metrics beyond just seeing if Elasticsearch is healthy might just be worth your while. Don't forget that there is a link to a free trial to Semitex Monitoring down below. Be sure to leave comments if you have any questions. Hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Keep monitoring everybody.